Hi, everyone. So I wanted to talk about uh, a few of my insider tips from Japan. Um, one thing you'll notice if you come to Japan, uh, most Japanese, they take their job very seriously. So uh, I may make some people feel angry by some of the things I say today, but I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm from Canada, and I travel to America and Canada. And uh, one thing that often shocks me, and I sort of remember what it was like when I left, just people uh, quite lackadaisical on their job, you know, on their phone, making you wait, uh, just not that into customer service. And the Japanese are a lot more professional, take their job very seriously. There's a sense of pride in it. So if you don't act like that, if you are one of the people that take pride in the job and try to do a good job, you're going to be ahead of uh, so many people, really. Um, even if it's your part-time job, I would take it seriously because you you don't know who's watching. You know, you, the, that uh, customer that came in uh, may know the president, may actually be the president, unless you <laughs> know who that, that is. You can have an opportunity fall into your lap by doing a fantastic job, or you can shoot yourself in the foot in the same way. So yeah, I'm kind of shocked by that. So I think if you come here, you would notice that, that um, even if someone's a cleaning person or what have you, they take the job very seriously and uh, try to do a good job, do a professional job. But yeah, what have I noticed uh, from living here? Um, I try to keep my eyes open and think about investing and things like that. Uh, of course, probably a lot of people know Unicro, uh, maybe less know GU. They're actually the same company. Uh, they both sell clothes. Uh, Unicro is very uh, uh, reasonably priced and good quality clothes. Uh, GU is very cheap. Uh, some of the clothes are good quality. Some are so so quality, but uh, very very cheap clothes. Uh, I shop at both actually, and just try to pick and choose what I what I get. Uh, those are very good solid businesses here, and if you can find something like that in your hometown or in your country, uh, you know, keep your eyes open. What are the good companies to invest in? Kind of thinking like Warren Buffett, you know, looking around researching what uh, what do you like what do you buy from uh, who do you go to for service you know uh, keep your eyes open there's another uh, company here called cuthouse QB and it was business of the year uh, not so long ago and I kind of like I kind of think of it as the McDonald's of haircuts <laughs> uh, you go in and you buy a ticket and you sit in your designated spot. So if you're the number two person, you sit in the number two seat, and then everyone gradually moves up until you get your haircut. It's like a conveyor belt almost, but you're just sitting there. And uh, they actually vacuum your head <laughs> with this vacuum. It feels good. Sounds bad, but it feels good. And the haircuts are very cheap. There's no tipping. Uh, you can get a good haircut. Uh, for about, I don't know, $12, something like that. don't think you can do that in Canada or America, especially with tipping. And they're good haircuts. Yeah, they're sort of, I think they're kind of basic haircuts, but it's a, a really good business. So I've often thought about, you know, is there are there other businesses you could do that? It's uh, kind of uh, quick in, quick out, reliable service, clean, professional, um, you know, what are some other things that, that might be in your country that would be similar? When I started my first English school in Japan, uh, I was very young and naive. And um, not that I know anything, know everything now, uh, but I thought, uh, oh, I'm such a great teacher. Uh, this school blew up in modern sort of slang language. Uh wow, I'm such a great teacher, I got so many students. But um, after looking back on it, I realized that basically I had been networking without knowing it. Um, my wife had a store, my wife's Japanese, and she knew she knew so many people in the area, 
many, many people knew her. And because of her, my school, you know, blew up. And I think I was a good teacher. I thought I was a fantastic teacher. <laughs> but I think the reality was I was a good enough teacher. And my wife was very much trusted. You know, without her, I would not have uh, had a school that blew up in 10 months. You know, we went from zero students to 125 students in 10 months. So uh, I had 20 million yen in the bank and I was 28 years old. Uh, 20 million yen, that's about, uh, was worth more than, but about 200 grand in the bank within 10 months. Uh, of course, I had to teach for that money, but people paid up front. Anyway, networking is very, very important wherever you are. In Japan, I would say that the investment market is uh, not as advanced as in North America. Um, mutual funds are easy. Uh, the fees tend to be higher, I think, for a lot of things, for stocks, uh, especially if you're an English speaker, if you're functional, functionally illiterate in Japanese and you want to deal with people in English, your options are more limited. Uh, there are a lot of options. I think there are a lot of opportunities in real estate here. The real estate market is very undervalued. Uh, there are many empty houses called Akia, which you can often get for a song or even free. Uh, the caveat being that you need to spend a lot of money and a lot of time fixing them up. But if you are like a friend of mine, if you're already good at carpentry, pretty lucrative business, you can do very well. Uh, then you could open an Airbnb. Uh, you could live it in it yourself. You could possibly open an English school in it if it was, if there were enough people living nearby. Uh, boom, lots of things you could think about doing. I've always tried to th uh, think outside the box. So a lot of people uh, think my ideas are crazy. Uh, for example, you know, I told people I was going to go to Japan. And if I stayed, I would start an English school. And admittedly, it does sound crazy, but that's exactly what I did. I think if you're watching this video, maybe you're like me, and those ideas don't seem so far fetched. So, uh, try to surround your people with people like you, uh, who see the potential in your ideas. The same thing when I started my first guest house, uh, people couldn't see it, you know, thought, uh, you're not in a tourist area. It's not going to work. Uh, but it, it has. And now we have two guest houses and I might even open a third. I'm not sure, but, um, there are lots of opportunities if you keep your eyes open and you're willing to think in a different way. Uh, a lot of Japanese don't think of starting their own business, which is uh, kind of unfortunate, I think. They tend to uh, want to work for a big company or maybe not even want to work, but they feel that's a safe bet, which yeah, I guess it is safer unless, unless the company goes, <laughs> goes out of business. But... Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of wish more Japanese were more entrepreneurial. Uh, about uh, in investing or f my f finance strategies, uh, we put in money into mutual funds every month, uh, at least $500. And then we're saving in other ways as well. A lot of the money from the guest houses is reinvested in the guest houses, but that's slowly building up as well. Uh, we have... Uh, money in sort of insurance, but sort of a savings insurance account. I don't know if I would recommend that to anyone else, but in Japan, it seems to make some sense. Uh, I tend to, if I was in North America, I'd be very careful about insurance. I'd rather have insurance for insurance and not as an investment vehicle. One thing I'm wanting to explore more is perhaps uh, crowd crowdsourcing uh, for investment money for a good cause for, you know, fixing, perhaps fixing up some old Japanese houses 
that could be then turned into some kind of business, like a local business for the town, some kind of guest house or something. One problem at a certain point is uh, coming up with the money to invest. You know, you may have good ideas, but your money may be locked up in certain things. So that's the disadvantage of buying property. Your money's kind of locked into the property uh, in the hopes that it goes up eventually. Uh, it's an asset that you always have. If you haven't been exploring AI, I really encourage you to do so. Uh, even basic things like chat GPT, uh, it is the future. And um, it's interesting that a lot of people on YouTube that are very negative, or I would say even scared of AI, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scared of AI. I'm a little bit um, concerned about the future, but I would for sure try to explore that and see if there's any way that you can use that technology to help you in the, in the future. Uh, I think it's fantastic for getting ideas. Uh, it's actually surprisingly empathetic, <laughs> which I could never imagine. But yeah, if you have a problem or issue and you want to tell it to chat GPT, uh, you know, it could be quite helpful. And, um, a lot of the criticism I find quite interesting. Um, I know YouTube is sort of a personal thing. Uh, but if you watch my channel, you, you will know that I sort of use a mix of me and AI videos. And, uh, a lot of people are quite against AI videos. And one criticism I heard was, uh, I'm against it because all it does is just get information from the whole internet. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what it does. It gets information from the whole internet. That's something that I can't do. You know, I can't give you that. Uh, AI can get, you know, if I make a video about investing, it can take information from the whole internet on investing. And I think it's amazing. You know, if you want to learn something about Warren Buffett, it can uh, grab all of that information and, put it into kind of a digestible form that you can watch. That's, that's the, the criticism to me is the strength of the AI. So I find that quite funny. I think we're in such a strange time. Uh, it's a bit like when the car was taking over from the horse and people were quite worried about it. And uh, I don't know, the internet, and the infancy of the internet. So yeah, it's a very interesting time. But yeah, I would try to stay open-minded with AI and uh, try to use it yourself and see if it can help you. If you are not reading books, if you are not staying up to date with the news, if you're not reading the financial news, I really encourage you to do so. Um, I think a good part of me is I read a lot of books and of course I read a lot on the internet. Uh, I make a lot of courses on Udemy, maybe some of you know, and of course I make YouTube videos. So you have to do a lot of research uh, to do that. And uh, you learn so much, and then that leads to other things. And um, simply watching a lot of YouTube, I think you can learn a lot, but I don't think that should be the only way. Uh, if you don't read books, please start. It's such a fantastic thing to do. YouTube's great. The news is great, but it's sort of superficial knowledge to some extent. So I would really encourage you to, to delve into the depth <laughs> of some, some things you're interested in and read some books. If you aren't keep learning, keep learning by having your own business. Uh, most of the governments are pretty fair, I would say. I mean, that's a really general statement. But uh, Japan basically encourages you to have your own business in a lot of ways. Uh, it's a great country for having your own business. You can deduct so much. It's just great. So there's some huge advantages to having your own business, even if it's a side business. I mean, you can save a lot of money just from the tax write-offs. So I would really think about that. While we're also talking about <laughs> living in Japan, you have to be prepared for a crisis. Uh, wow, since I've been here, 
We've had a nuclear meltdown. We've had a huge earthquake. We've had huge typhoons that took out the train line. Uh, it's you're sort of living in the the ring of fire here, so you you're always uh, thinking about disasters. Of course, there's been there have been some earthquakes recently as well. One thing it's taught me is to not put all of your eggs in one basket. To have a fallback, you should have different sources of income. You shouldn't just have one source of income. So, yeah, I would encourage that for yourselves as well. A friend of mine named Steve, uh, he's a carpenter, but he has his own company too, I would say. I'm not sure if he would say that, but that's what I say. Uh, he, uh, he gets asked about doing a construction job uh, in various places in Japan. And uh, he gets a, a crew together. I think he has a regular crew. And I gather he's very skilled. And uh, he bought uh, a house in Japan, not in Tokyo, but near Tokyo. And he's slowly fixing it up to be a guest house. I think he's going to stay there sometimes, too. But these are the kind of things you can do. There are lots of things you can do if you put your mind to it, you know, thinking about your skills. I don't have those kind of carpentry skills, unfortunately. I wish I did. But yeah, think about your own your own uh, skills, your own skill sets. And is, is there some way you can uh, maximize those to make some money, start a business? If you are young, if you are in your teens or your 20s, I would start saving for retirement now. And uh, you've probably heard that before, and maybe it sounds silly, but yeah, it's just a lot easier if you start younger. We, my wife and I, we did start young. Uh, I was at university for quite a while, and uh, so I really only started to work full time when I was 26, and uh, that felt late to me, but maybe it's not so late. And then you're kind of starting from zero, so it was hard to save and uh, at that time, Japan was much more expensive than it is now. So even though I worked for a year, I was thinking I really hadn't saved much after a year. And then I basically took on some side hustles. I started uh, teaching. I had a full-time English teaching job, and then I picked up some part-time jobs. So I was basically side hustling with English teaching. And I saved uh, $10,000 in about three months and then I invested that, I think, in mutual funds and things like that. So um, you can, even when you're young, you know, you can work at the pizza parlor. I mean, use some of the money and have fun with it. But I would save some of it for the future. You start now um, with compound interest. It really adds up. So thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give us a like. And please subscribe. And I would love some comments about what you think is important in investing or anything, some questions, anything, please. I would love that. Thank you very much.